Fertilization is the fundamental moment of sexual reproduction and consists in the meeting between the two gametes, the man's sperm and the woman's egg cell. A cell called zygote will be formed, which has 46 chromosomes, 23 of maternal origin and 23 of paternal origin. Then the embryo will form, and then the fetus, which will lead to the development of a new life in the nine months of pregnancy. To find out what happens during pregnancy, month by month, I leave you, the three videos I made above. Having children is the dream of many couples, but it is not always possible, due to male and female fertility problems, linked to various causes. In the event that natural conception is not possible, it is possible to resort to artificial fertilization, also called medically assisted procreation (MAP). These are biomedical interventions that take place thanks to the support of a medical team and are based on the manipulation of spermatozoa and ova or embryos in the laboratory in order to facilitate the meeting of the spermatozoon with the ovum and therefore allow pregnancy. However, there are numerous artificial fertilization techniques, and they are divided into first, second, and third level. In this video, we will briefly see what they are. In the next videos, we will analyze one technique at a time, trying to understand how they work and what the differences are. Among the first level techniques, we find the simplest and least invasive ones. In this case, fertilization takes place in vivo, i.e. inside the female genital system. Artificial insemination, especially intrauterine insemination, is the main technique. It consists in inserting the spermatozoa, previously treated in the laboratory, into the woman's uterine cavity. In this way, the distance between the spermatozoa and the egg is shortened, thus facilitating the encounter. The spermatozoa with the greatest ability to fertilize the egg are chosen, and are inserted during the natural cycle of the woman, or following ovarian stimulation, monitored by ultrasound scans and blood tests. This technique offers a higher pregnancy rate than sexual intercourse, but lower than other assisted reproductive treatments. The second and third level techniques, on the other hand, are more complex and invasive and require fertilization to take place in vitro, i.e. in the laboratory. They are particularly suitable for patients with a more complicated gynecological and slash or andrological situation. Among the second level techniques, we find in vitro fertilization with embryo transfer or if intracytoplasmic sperm injection or ICSI. Let's briefly see how they work and what the differences are. In vitro fertilization consists of taking the woman's oocytes through a needle applied over an ultrasound probe. It penetrates the follicles and sucks up all the contents and then observes and analyzes it in the laboratory to identify the oocytes. At this point, the insemination can take place in two ways. In the case of in vitro fertilization, the spermatozoa, previously treated in the laboratory, and the oocyte, are placed on the same culture plate. You'll expect the sperm to naturally penetrate the membrane surrounding the egg, just as it does naturally. In the case of intracytoplasmic sperm injection, the single sperm is injected directly into the cytoplasm of the oocyte. Approximately 18 hours after insemination, it will be verified whether and how many oocytes have been fertilized. In the following days, we will check how many embryos have formed. At this point, we will proceed with the embryo transfer. Through a thin catheter and under ultrasound control, the uterine cavity is reached where the embryos are released. Untransferred embryos are frozen so they can be reused if pregnancy is not achieved on the first attempt. The subsequent transfers will not require further ovarian stimulation, nor the removal of the eggs. After about two weeks, a pregnancy test is done by taking blood, looking for the pregnancy hormone HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. Among the third level techniques, we find gift, intertubal transfer of gametes, it is a technique 
that consists in taking the oocytes by ultrasound-guided vaginal route or through laparoscopy. Meanwhile, the man donates his semen sample. At this point, the female and male gametes are transferred into the fallopian tubes where fertilization should take place. In the event that embryos or zygotes are transferred, we speak of ZIF technique, intertubal transfer of the zygotes. TET technique, intertubal embryo transfer. With these last techniques, unlike the GIF technique, the separated gametes, ova and spermatozoa, are not deposited in the tubes, but the result of their fertilization at the zygote or embryo stage. They therefore have a greater chance of success, because the egg has already been fertilized in the laboratory, but they are more invasive. Scientific studies show that women's fertility undergoes a first significant decline already around the age of 32 and a second more rapid decline after the age of 37. It almost reaches zero around the age of 50 in the years preceding menopause. Thanks to medically assisted procreation techniques, you have one more chance of having children. However, the success rate after the age of 40 is still very limited. It is important to always contact a center specialized in MAP in order to be constantly followed by a multidisciplinary team and be guided, step by step, on the path to follow to get to a pregnancy.